session. A very good evening to one and all present here. I, Itasha Sabnis, welcome you all on behalf of the Gokhale Institute of Politics and Economics, Pune, for the special session under our Thursday seminar series. Before we begin, I request Professor Reddy to share his thoughts with us. Uh, very good evening to you all, uh, respected uh, Vice Chancellor, Dr. Ajit Ranade. I'm not used to this. Uh, Dr. Parkal Prabhakar and my respected colleagues, staff, my dear students, media personnel, a warm welcome to you all. At the outset, I would like to thank Dr. Parakala Prabhakar for accepting his re our request to be here to share his insights on new uh, political economy of India. Sir, this talk is going to be part of our uh, fortnightly uh, seminar series where we invite distinguished uh, uh, personalities to share their uh, experiences, insights uh, across the globe, primarily from different, uh, primarily areas from economics, uh, agriculture, sociology, demography, environment, etc., etc. And following the legacy of uh, Gopal Krishna Gokhale and the founders of the institute, we invite every idea. We respect every insight, we discuss, we debate, we deliberate the issues of the contemporary. We agree some, we disagree some. As our Vice Chancellor used to tell, mention whenever the, we meet him uh, on some occasions, we may disagree, but we should not be disagreeable. It goes on. And we look forward to your talk, sir. And uh, also th we also thank uh, Dr. Uh, Patnaik uh, for accepting to be uh, chair and moderating the session. And Professor Patnaik works in the area of uh, macroeconomics and finance, and he has a long career with the uh, Bank of India. Uh, and uh, before going to give it to uh, Dr. Patnaik, I request uh, Shitar to introduce uh, the, the contributions of uh, the chief guest today. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Today, we are honored to have Dr. Prakar Prabhakar, a political economist and communication strategist with us as our guest speaker for the session. The topic of today's seminar is Political Economy of New India. Before I call upon the speaker, I would like to request Professor Patnaik to felicitate our guest. I would like to introduce the book that Sir has authored. The Crooked Timber of New India by Dr. Prakal Prabhakar is a critical analysis of the current state of India's polity, society and economy under the Narendra Modi-led BJP government. In this book, Sir argues that India is facing a crisis with signs of religious majoritarianism, creeping authoritarianism and economic mismanagement evident in various developments since 2014. The book examines the Prime Minister's Independence Day speeches, the RSS chief's statements, unemployment and inequality statistics, the partisan role of investigative agencies and the mishandling of the COVID-19 pandemic, among other issues. Sir's analysis suggests that silence and complacency are no longer an option for citizens who care about the future of India's democracy, social harmony and economy. This urgent and no-holds-barred book aims to help readers connect the dots and see the true picture of the new India being fashioned before their eyes. Now I request Sir to please uh, come up on the stage and uh, share. Professor Patnaik and friends. Uh, this is a great honor. I'm not saying this uh, just as a formality, but uh, um, you know, uh, it's been a dream to come to Gokhale Institute. Once upon a time, I wanted to study here. Um, a friend of mine, I think he's somewhere here, uh, Ram Gopal, 
uh, he came here, but I went to JNU. So I couldn't come. I, I couldn't come here. Now I'm here. I feel very happy uh, to see you all. And of course, I hold Gopal Krishna Gokhale in very high regard. Um, had he lived longer, probably the trajectory of Indian social thought could have been much richer. You know, I remember Pune was the place for many a battle, especially in the in the social sphere. Political sphere, of course, you know, there have been battles going on, all right. But then in the social sphere, in terms of uh, female education, schooling, untouchability, caste equations, Varnashrama Dharma, critique, oh my God, so many things have come from uh, Pune. Um, in spite of that, I think that reflects here also, that in spite of all that, I think Pune probably has been one of the least violent of places. In spite of, you know, very, very uh, uh, clear lines drawn, ideological lines drawn. Therefore, I'm very glad. So when I said I'm extremely happy to be here, I just didn't uh, uh, mean it to be a, a very formal kind of a statement. I really meant it. We have about half an hour, 40 minutes for me to speak. And then I would like to have a, a q and a. Is it there, uh, Shiva? Yeah, because you know I don't believe in the monkey bath. I believe in some kind of a dialogue, uh, some some kind of a. I I would like my views and my opinions to be challenged. Um, it's not that you know I've come here to you know say something and get out of it. Let's have a discussion, uh, and in that spirit, of course, I would also. Be, uh, be talking in that spirit. Of course, there are probably a large number of uh, students of economics here. Um, but I would prefer to make it not very technical. Because I am at the intersection of uh, economy, polity, society, history, etc, etc. I, I, I belong to a school which believes that social science is one rather than, you know, very watertight compartments. For today's purposes, I would like to look at the political implications of our economy and the economic implications of our polity. This is how I would like to look at the entire thing that is called New India. You know, the other day, there was a news item in Hyderabad. which really woke up many people to a new fact. We did not know, I do not know how many of you knew earlier. That is, somebody from, a young man from Ukraine, belonging to Hyderabad, his dead body was flown back to Hyderabad. That is, for the first time, people came to know Professor Patnaik, that uh, people from Hyderabad have been going to Ukraine to help the Russian war effort. I don't know how many of you are aware of that. This is one. The second thing is that sometime back, after the 
Gaza conflict started. The Israeli government has sacked almost all the Palestinian employees and they wanted to recruit people from different countries and one of course one candidate is India. So they opened initially recruitment centers in uh, Uttar Pradesh and Haryana. Later on they expanded those recruitment centers to Madhya Pradesh and Haryana also. And lots of youngsters have been queuing up. And some media persons went there and asked these people, are you aware that there is a, a war situation in Gaza where you are going to go for the job? Are you aware that there is a huge risk? And the youngsters said, yes, we are aware that there is a war situation there and our lives are at risk, but we are taking the risk so that instead of dying jobless here, we'll take a chance, go there, work as long as we live, send some money home and you know if you are alive we'll come back, otherwise it's fine. The third thing that I would like you to notice is, uh, remember, uh, look, one more thing I wanted to tell you before all this is that I am not going to say anything that you already do not know. You know all these things that I am going to say. I am just trying to jog maybe your memory. You probably would have forgotten, you know, because there are so many other things coming up. Every day a lot of big news cycles come up and yesterday's thing is yesterday's thing. Only thing that I would add in this whole exercise is to throw some light on the pattern and maybe connect some dots and try to you know give you my own interpretation which need not agree to your uh, with your interpretation you can have your own interpretation but i'll I'll give you my own what I think of the whole thing what I think the whole thing means to me. Huh. Sometime in 2022 beginning, February, uh, January, February, I think, there was a advertisement by the Indian Railways for the regions of whatever is the zone called Uttar Pradesh and Bihar. Is the mic all right? Okay. And the jobs that were advertised, they used, they were called NTPC jobs, non-technical professional categories, Amarendra, non-technical professional categories, so preferred categories. It doesn't mean much, but it feels good. You know, it's non-technical which means that you know you don't need any technical skills it is it, the, because the jobs require you to clean up wash up you know move the furniture from here to there but then they are ntp what are you doing i'm i'm an ntpc which means you know it sounds good these are all you know how uh, things are euphemistically called anyway uh, 35000 jobs were advertised the applicants were 1 crore 25 lakhs. For, for 35,000 non-technical jobs, the number of applicants were 1 crore 25 lakhs. The reason why I said this I've given you these instances is because you know that that gives you an idea of what these people are who these people are how many are there you know uh, you can imagine some of the young faces some of them probably of your age um, instead of saying you know 24 percent or 23 percent or 25.3 percent to me somebody like me it makes not much of a sense you know it, it's easy to quantify things and you know uh, depersonalize or impersonalize things. But if you look at 
35,000 jobs and 1 crore 25 lakh applicants. Then you will get a picture. People prepared to go to Gaza, people prepared to go to Ukraine to fight in a war or help the war effort. You will have an idea of what the crisis is. So the crisis in the, in the employment scenario in India is so severe. This is one. The second thing I would uh, like to submit to you is, Professor Patnaik, you must raise your hand when I, when I reach my limit. You will do that? Okay. Um, how much time did I take so far? Yeah, you know, but you see, <laughs> because I, I need to cover certain things. Now, I don't want to say so, too many things on economy and you know, uh, uh, lose out time on the other things. Okay, fine. Uh, uh, tell me whenever you want me to stop. I'll shut up. I don't exceed my time. Um, you know, some time back, I think it was in February, the government of India has released a, a white paper on the economy. Somebody asked me what I thought about the white paper on the economy. I said, look, I do not have to wait for the government to give me a white paper on the economy. I get my white paper once in every week and once in every month. Once in every week, Professor Patnaik, I go and buy my vegetables. And once in every month, I go and buy my provisions. So when I do this, I have my white paper almost twice a month. And I have my own white paper on that. And I am not here trying to compare Jawaharlal Nehru with you know who. I am not trying to do that. I am trying to do you know what I paid sometime in November 23. That's when. The, we are in April, beginning of April. So three months and two months, five months or four months. Just four months ago, what did I pay? And what did I pay? Actually, when I go back home tomorrow, I'll have to go again to buy my provisions. But I'll tell you my March bill compared to my November. You know, dal, which we use quite uh, uh, much, is it was in November 110 rupees. I don't know how much uh, you paid in November. Amarendra, do you also go shopping like me? Um, I last month march i paid 170 rupees dal how much did you pay anyway you try and you know if you want a white paper go to the market go to the bazaar and not to these fancy uh, 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 supermarkets go to the you know normal provision stores like i do and when i said this uh, uh, last week in Vijayawada, they said, oh, you got it for uh, 170. We paid 180. That's what they said. Anyway, I paid, lucky, I paid 170. Jaggery, which also we use quite a lot. I'm not going, going to give you my entire provisions list. I don't want you to know also. So I, I bought Jaggery for 42 in November. I paid 50 last month. Sugar, I paid 34 in, in November last and 42 last month. And then when I go to my uh, vegetable market, you know I bargain. Even after bargaining, when you, if you go to a fancy supermarket, you don't bargain. Whatever, you know, uh, you know they, they just scan it and then you have to you pay it. You don't ask questions. But if, 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 a, if an old lady sells the thing, then you'll say, why 10 rupees? Anyway, I also do that. 
and after hard bargaining i paid 95 rupees per ginger for ginger in uh, november 23 and 120 last month hyderabad hyderabad oh, cheaper oh, tomorrow morning remind me and green chilies we use a lot of green chilies you know i come from hyderabad and uh, i paid 65 in uh, november last year 83 rupees last month this is now somebody might say look this is anecdotal it's not anecdotal it's my lived experience and if we are sitting very happily in a university or an institute and say look what is the uh, headline inflation headline inflation is is what about 5.4 percent under 6 percent and RBI said 6 percent but what is the basket of goods that are included in the basket in order to determine the inflation rate of inflation and we all, you all know that but to me you know that doesn't really reflect the food inflation health inflation education inflation but these are we are not concerned with uh, commodities and metals and things like that but you know the government of india or whatever for whatever reason maybe one of your faculty was there in the committee to decide i do not know but anyway these were some of the things that are the lived experience of like people like me but if you want to know what is the vegetable inflation vegetable inflation recently is now known to be about 27 percent pulses is 19.5 percent cereals 7.8 percent spices which is important for me is 16.4 percent milk inflation is 4.6 percent eggs 5.6 percent sugar 7.5 percent if somebody if there are people who would like to know the numbers these are the numbers but i have given you my lived experience also i, I don't know when i go to the market i'm not worried about you know what is 6.2 what is 6.5 what 5.8 but you see i have to tell you this sometime back i had seen in one of the pink papers a headline that inflation hits lowest in six months then i'm not somebody who would just leave it at that the headline so i just try to read what happened what what is written and the text uh, professor patnaik said said that you know from 7.1 percent it came down to 6.9 percent lowest in the last six months that's what you know it the, the number could be anything but you see the point is this the point is somewhere the headline management is different from my lived experience when i go and buy vegetables fruits milk you know my pulses and my uh, uh, provisions etc this is another lived experience And then, of course, what I what I said about unemployment, you must have seen what the ILO had said recently. There was a employment unemployment report that was released in Delhi by none other than the chief economic advisor. And the chief economic advisor, uh, while speaking on the occasion, said, you know, things like unemployment, etc., are not the remit of the government. Have you noticed that? Did somebody read that? Yeah. Okay. That's what. Yesterday, I think, or day before, I don't remember because I, I read too too many newspapers. In the Times of India, the newly appointed uh, chairman of the Pay Commission. I mean, it's not Pay Commission. Sorry, uh, Finance Commission. Finance Commission. You see, uh, we all think of pay. Finance Commission. He said, don't, don't lose your sleep over inequality. Have you read that? Yeah. We'll come to that also. And 
you know these are the mandarins of the government's economic thinking the reason why i'm saying you know i i i i respect uh, professor pangaria a lot um, of course anand nageshwaran also the the, the sound people uh, but there's one more statement again uh, one of the you know young and upcoming mandarin of the government of india he said you know what are you dreaming of because there is there is a poverty of dream poverty of aspiration in this country if you if you you know go watch rithvi ghatak and uh, who is the other uh, director uh, uh, he didn't he didn't dare to talk about satyajit ray um, mrunal sen you will be like this you should dream and aim to become jeff bezos uh, who are the other people our icons zuckerberg and you know people like that you you dream to be like that what is what are all this so just don't gather around on a or a cup of tea chat about you know what's unemployment price rise you know what's happening in manipur these are not the things for you you aim high that is what kanan have you have seen this this is kanan gopinathan have you heard his name yeah this is uh, this is what we are told to dream about now we'll come to these uh, uh, three propositions they have good propositions sound propositions uh people like you will have to you know challenge them criticize them critically look at them critique them in other words we'll do that if if there is time we'll do that also you know uh i'll tie these things up what we have been seeing is for the last especially 9 to 10 years there's been a steady flow of high net worth individuals out of the country i don't know if you've uh, come across this and what i'm reading now you know i want to bomb- i don't want to bombard you with too much of data but i'll i'll read a couple of things but the point is this that you know these these data that i'm i'm trying to give you are some of the last trickles from the government government after that actually stopped giving data once upon a time indian statistical architecture was very very respected throughout the world today there are doubts about indian data because the base years are being changed um you know so, so many corrections in the name of corrections you know a lot of things are being uh, and you know even the the measurement for instance sometime back a 1 km four lane road used to be 1 km of four lane road i don't i didn't say anything what 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 are you laughing today a 1 km of a four lane road is a minimum of 8 i mean we have not reached is it 8 now a uh, 1 km of four lane road now is 4 km May, don't give this idea please <laughs> it might be it might become we do not know uh, but you see this is how you know there is because we are in a in a hurry to show rapid development and rapid progress we are no more a laggard you know we are laying road you know we are laying this we are you know connecting and we are electrifying and all that kind of a thing yes but on the other hand what's happening is that um in in 2014 because you see these things come out with a time lag 
in 2014 1,29,000 people have left the country not just to see some other places or you know to go and work or to study but they left the place relinquishing the Indian citizenship giving up passports and 15 one lakh thirty one thousand. Sixteen one lakh forty one thousand. The last figure that we have, I do not want to, you know, reel out all these, but the last figure that we have is twenty two is two lakh twenty five thousand. And most of them, you know, are HNIs. I also met some people. Don't tell anybody, I also met them. And you know the domestic investment has been very tepid. Domestic savings has been contracting. Because with so much of unemployment and the wage in the rural areas and the unorganized sector has been stagnant for a long time. If there ever was an increase, it was 0.2% in construction labor. That's what the data tells us. Okay. You, of course, you are all there. You, you know most of this data. I don't want to repeat these things. And, you know, when I talked about the number of people leaving the country, relinquishing and surrendering the passports, you also have a very interesting side show to this. That is, it's officially reported that 23,200 persons from vibrant Gujarat also left. And do you know the, the highest number of people trying to enter the United States illegally? Now, earlier it used to be South Americans. The Trump wanted to build a wall and all that kind of thing, remember? Now, he does, even if he comes back, he doesn't have to build the wall because they are coming from India. Now, according to the US immigration, their record, it could be more, but generally the government records are very conservative, isn't it? There are 96,000 last year attempted to illegally cross into the United States from India. This is the figure. I mean, all this, you know, it, it's not a good thing to go on saying that. I mean, don't think that I'm happy to say this. You know, somebody, the other day I was, uh, I was speaking at a Zoom conference with some people uh, uh, in uh, the US. So I told them, look, you are living abroad. You would like your country to be, you know, regarded very highly. You want your country to be respected. Therefore, you to be respected, isn't it? But just because you want your country to be respected don't don't try to lie don't try to fake you really make your country strong and respected and say look we are here we have arrived and then somebody asked me i'm, I'm just digressing i'm just trying to report to you what happened the other day somebody asked me look aren't we the fifth largest economy very valid point Aren't we the fastest growing economy? I said, look, we are fifth largest economy, right? And we have overtaken the United Kingdom and become the fifth largest economy. And then I said, how many people think that United Kingdom is a developed country? All of you, isn't it? We know that it is a developed country. 
what's the per capita income of uh, UK? 35 or 36,000, maybe 45, I think, 45, uh, okay, 45,000 US dollars. And we were overtaken the UK and become the fifth largest economy. And now my government tells me, my leader tells me that we will be a developed country in 2047. You know, I fail to understand Amarendra, you tell me this, after the meeting is over, tell me, or maybe some of you can tell me, how is it possible that, you know, you overtake a developed economy, but yet you, are, you will become developed economy in 2047? I thought I've already become one. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, I do not know. I mean, as far as, you know, if you develop, if you overtake somebody, I don't understand. And why is it I am 140th in per capita income? If nobody points out, I can say, look, I'm doing very well. But if somebody points out, then I'm at a loss. This is, this, these are some of the problems with New India. You know, we, we have a, a huge narrative which is at odds with in my uh, vegetable market, in my provision store, in my you know, petrol station. I don't know, how much are you paying for the uh, fuel here? What lucky, you are lucky guy. I pay 107 rupees a litre. Oh yeah, because, okay. Be because of the elections, okay, fine, you're lucky. Uh, fine. Um, that is another one. And you know, uh, rural distress is very severe. I don't know how many of you do really come from rural areas. Data is one, but you just see. Um, you know, last fiscal, the amount that was allocated for Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Act, Manrega, the entire annual allocation was exhausted in six months because it's a demand-based scheme. As you demand, you have to provide, isn't it, Kannan? So the, the the government's estimate was over in six months' time. That is the you know who will go for a minimum wage job when there is no alternative, isn't it? So this is what has happened. Of course, um, we will talk about the, you know, uh, the lifting of, uh, lifting, lifting up from poverty, how many million? Uh, 270 million, somebody says, and 300 million, 330 million. You know, what is 330 million? 330 million is equivalent to the United States population. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, we'll talk about that also. I will end... Uh, the, the economy chapter here, of course, there are, there, are, there are many more, we can talk about it a bit later. But uh, let's also talk about briefly the democratic life, which is again, I'll have to link it to the economy in a way because as you all know, agriculture still remains a very, very important sector in our country, directly or indirectly impacting the incomes and livelihoods of, of, of a majority of the people. And in the, in the Indian political geography, a large part of it is rural and dependent on agriculture, directly or indirectly. So in, in, if you look at that, there were some laws that were brought in to change bring in change in the agriculture sector, which probably some people think they were long overdue, they are very good. 
And some people think that they are not very good. They are not very far from friendly. They are corporate friendly. We do not know. We'll, uh, let's not get into that. It may be good. They may be bad. We do not know. I have my own opinion. You have your own, own opinion on that. But my point is this. When you are bringing in legislation on a sector, which is such an important sector impacting on the lives of the largest number of people of this country. What did we do? We passed those bills in 10 minutes. Do you know? We are so quick. And then some people thought they were inimical to their interests. So, they came out onto the road. They just did not limit themselves to tweeting and, uh, you know, posting uh, on the Facebook, but they also actually came out onto the road. And then when they were agitating, they were called anti-national. They were called anti-government. They were called anti-India. They were also called Khalistanis because you know, you can you can you can identify a Khalistani by because that that's now that's also one of the ways in which you can identify who you are. You know. Uh, then, you know, suddenly, the prime minister decided to withdraw them just a few days before the Punjab election, Samarendra. So, he addressed the nation and he withdrew. He announced that they would withdraw and the parliament met. They were withdrawn again with less than 10 minutes discussion. So, we, we have not discussed why they should be passed. We have not discussed why they should be withdrawn and that promise was not fulfilled it seems again there are people onto the streets but you don't hear of that anymore in the, in the, in the initial days maybe you heard about it you 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 were, you were shown some pictures but do you see them again at all these days you don't so this is the legislation and you also had an instance of over 140 elected members of parliament were thrown out of the house and proceedings continued and bills were passed and to me in my book democracy does not mean just going to the polling booth once in five years casting the vote and coming out and shutting up I feel that democracy is much more than that. It's a governance by discussion, by dialogue, by conversation, by disagreement, by persuasion, etc., etc. That's what I was taught. That's what I would like my democracy to be. Talk about it. And I do not see anybody as the sole repository of the entire wisdom, if not entire political science, entire wisdom. I, I, I don't see anybody in that, uh, you know, image. So it has to be discussed, but that was not discussed. And look at the center state federal relations. Another aspect, very important aspect. Now you have certain states coming out and asking, look, pointing out, you collect a rupee from us, but you give us only 30 paisa, 20 paisa, 35 paisa, etc., etc. And there are some states where you collect 1 rupee and give 4 rupees, 5 rupees, 6 rupees, even 8 rupees. Why is it? People are asking questions. Well, some people say that, you know, uh, 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 that is how it, it has to be and all that. Yeah, fine, it could be. But there has to be some kind of a justification for it. Now, the government's defense could be that 
hey, look you we can't do anything other than follow very strictly the finance commission's recommendations if finance commission says you give them this much percentage we have to give only this that much percentage we can't give more or we can't give less but but i don't know if you've heard that government of india started collecting cesses and surcharges and cesses and surcharges do not form part of the divisible pool of taxes collected by the center and these have amounted to about 40 lakh crores and these 40 lakh crores almost are a discretionary fund of the central government it can be used it can be given it can be withheld the the formula of 42% or 32% of the finance commission you have to you do it but then what about this and this is the one for instance you know i know a state government where housing program which is called the now it is called pmay prime minister's awas yojana prime minister awas yojana the central grant to that matching grant you know you have to the state government will have to put in money and the center puts in money then it becomes operational that is how the uh, centrally sponsored schemes they operate center's share of pmay per house is 75000 now no political party in power in any state can give 75000 rupees to the so called labhardi or beneficiary and say build a house because next time when they go and vote when they go and ask for a vote or their mla or uh, their municipal councillor or their panchayat president goes around they'll be slapped the decent house therefore the state government kannan gives 4 lakhs and center gives 75000 but the center says look you write it in hindi you write the name in hindi you put the picture of who you know and you paint in these colors and these people should inaugurate the colony not those people you know that kind of a thing and the st- st- state governments are saying look we are paying 4 lakhs and you are paying 75000 and why are you dictating us these are the things that are straining the federation now the talk of cooperative federalism where the prime minister and the entire um, uh, the all the chief ministers together uh, forms a team and team india those days are gone it is no more the prime minister and the chief ministers as team india it is parivar now that that is the team india now myself and you know 140 crore you know that that is where we are so um, fiscal federalism is a problem and then of course even politically the bills passed by the state legislatures are not signed by the governors and you know uh, some of the governors are very very active um, and they don't sign and some of the bills are after the legislature passes and twice thrice they are they are sent to the president of india president of india also doesn't sign so this is frustrating states now the point is this some some people might think oh it might be happening in that state or this state not in our state you know if this happens that state now it will happen tomorrow in this state also in that state also in another state also the, the other day i went to some state uh, uh sir and they said uh, i said look do you know what is happening in manipur we have not seen it in the newspapers lately but it has not stopped it's almost in a year now and you know our our our, uh, our governments very lofty motto is i came to know of this uh, during the g20 summit what is the motto vasudhaiva kutumbakam uh, 
And then I wondered, the entire earth is my family, but not Manipur, is it? Why? The entire earth is one family and my family, but not people who prayed like that or like this, who wear that kind of dress and not this kind of dress, who eat this and who eat that and not eat this. Is that is that what we mean by the Vasudhaiva Kutumbakam? You know, you know, and I also uh, looked at this. What is this Vasudhaiva Kutumbakam? I'll 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 stop this after this. Uh, I'll, I'll just give you a, uh, a little uh, uh, detail about this. You know, this is not stated anywhere in our uh, scriptures or in our ancient books as a motto. It is a descriptive part which you find in one of the minor Upanishads, Kanan. This minor Upanishad is called Maho Upanishad. It is not one of those major Upanishads on which your Shankara had written commentaries. Probably this uh, Upanishad came much later, much after the 8th century, maybe 9th, maybe 10th, even 11th. Otherwise, you know, if it is such an important uh, uh, Upanishad, he would have written a commentary. He wrote commentary. It's, it's not something of a. Uh, it, it, it is not one of the Isha, Kena, Katha, Prishna, Munda, Mandukya, Taitari, Aitareyam, Chandogyam, Brahadaranjikam. It's not one of them. It is a very, very minor later Upanishad in which it says this the following. Don't worry about the meaning. I'll explain the meaning. I'll just read out the, 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 the text of it. I am Nijaha. Paro Veti Ganana Lagu Chetasam Udara Chiritanam to Vasudhaiva Kutumbakam. It means this to consider you as mine and him as other, para, is the characteristic of a small mind. Lagu Chetasam Udara Chiritanam, somebody with, you know. A broad mind considers Vasudhaiva Kutumbakam, the entire earth as one family. Now you know what that shloka is talking about. But, you know, if you say something in Sanskrit, you can fool people easily. Ah, you know, we, we said it. And, and, you know, I know, I know people who believe that anything that is in Sanskrit was written thousands of years ago. No, not necessarily. <laughs> you know, yesterday also some people write in Sanskrit, wrote in Sanskrit. So it is not necessary, just because it is said in Sanskrit, Sanskrit is an ancient language, but everything that is written in Sanskrit is not ancient, not necessarily ancient. But this is what we are led to believe. And, you know, a country which is now in 2024 wants to believe that we knew everything. Now, new India wants to become old India, old ancient India, not old India, ancient India. And new India has now made past worshipping blind worship of the past as the biggest enterprise. I'll shut up here, then you know we can we can have a dialogue and uh, I, maybe uh, some of the themes that I have in mind I can explain, uh, I can you know say something about when we discuss. Is that okay Professor Patnaik? Yeah. I'll stand, okay no problem. I think you have to address the chair, isn't it? It has already been challenged in the Supreme Court. Like, say, fiscal federalism you were talking about, and that other issue which were, it was basically by the government of Kerala versus the union government that is there in the Supreme Court last week only. It uh, has gone to the full bench of the Supreme Court or the constitutional bench of the Supreme Court for the review with regard to the fiscal federalism. So that is one thing which I would like to know whether, uh, which direction it will go. 
means uh, have you see are you seeing any thing positive at the end from the judicial review that is going to happen that is one thing second is just a passive comment that you have been talking about the movement of labor but illegal migration i call, i mean sir, that is of course uh, not to be promoted but on the other hand if you see the legal migration and the consequent uh, remittances that is flowing to the this part of the world so how that is going to because we are having some at least some regions within the country that has historically been benefited by the kind of remittances that has been flowing back so how do you respond to that thing so these are my immediate questions thank you thank you professor when i talked about uh, migration the two types of migration uh, when i when i gave you some data it is not migration i gave you the data regarding people who are leaving the country relinquishing the citizenship going for good that's one the second thing is people who are trying to illegally enter other countries especially the united states have given this. you know uh, if you illegally enter it's not easy for you to remit maybe impossible i do not know or you can you can find some channels of you know sending something or the other but that's not the way so the point i was trying to make is that you know why are people willing to relinquish or prepared to relinquish citizenship and giving up passports on the one hand and why are people so desperately wanting to cross illegally which means it it is a reflection of the domestic economy and domestic political economy that is the thing and about uh, well i i i probably uh, um uh, you know i referred the case to your state i think isn't it yeah and of course your state is a is a, is a wonderful big recipient of all the remittances and it is economy how much is it what 27% now it has been coming down maybe 15% right now ah but one but Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a huge amount. In fact, uh, their economy. I mean, if uh, if uh, after uh, after your remittances is uh, liquor and lottery. That is for the state government, right? But the advantage is that this adds to the. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm just I mean, later when. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, well, I uh, see. If if uh, the supreme court has to go by the constitution and the con the federal spirit of the constitution of course there are there are people who do not want india to be any more a federal structure that's that's there but if you as long as we have this constitution and if the supreme court bench goes by the book then of course you know that will have a positive uh, outcome that much i can say Uh, hello sir i wanted to ask uh, uh, hello sir my name is arya i am an undergraduate student here at the gokhale institute uh, as an economist or an economic student uh, speaking from an objective perspective uh, these elections face me with two choices one between a, a dynastic government who wants to worship themselves by giving themselves bharat ratnas and uh, an authoritarian regime who wants to worship the past so from an economic standpoint what is better because from the looks of it the common man is set to suffer there is no economic point of view this i'll come to that you see for instance ah uh, actually this brings me to uh, professor panagaria's uh, uh, um, essay also you know uh, he said something very interesting and very attractive also and he said it close on the heels of the um uh the report on inequality the inequality lab run by toma peketty where it said that 1% of india controls or has 22% of income and 1% has about 40% of the assets this is the thing and i said why are you worried about it don't lose sleep over it i don't know how many people have you have lost sleep 
don't lose it if at all you are losing sleep don't lose it because you see these are very nice people let them become rich once they become rich you will also get something or the other if not immediately maybe tomorrow day after down the line it will trickle down because these are wealth creators both of them are wealth creators so let them become rich and he also said one more interesting thing i don't know how many of you read it don't worry about you know ostentatious consumption don't worry I mean, why are pre- people creeping about you know pre wedding bashes and all that don't worry let them they do that but they also create a, you know a huge amount of wealth look at that and he also said something even more important you read it yeah you not read it listen then he also said yesterday time seven day or day before yesterday yeah he also said you know where i live very close to that there is a billionaire i don't bother about you know his wealth and all that but if in my department somebody gets a bigger rise than me i'm worried about it i think you know he is he is he is addressing a very hu- basic human thing you don't laugh at it it's very important therefore what he says is that you know you know we had in 60s we had one billionaire now we have 165 billionaires that is the data he didn't doesn't refer to that but he says don't worry about that kind of inequality let them become and it has no implications don't you know this uh, what did he say this inequality inequality warriors or something like that he said very interesting phrase he used um they worry about it don't worry what happens nothing will happen you know somebody in the rural area they don't bother about who is billionaire and who is becoming billionaire who is not being becoming billionaire they are interested and they are interested in you know their own day to day things if if they are taken care of they'll be, they'll be happy which means that anybody who is dreaming that this inequality will upend the apple cart of the present regime you you are dreaming it won't happen because people don't bother about it that's what he is trying to say well maybe we do not know but the point is this the point i would like to ask when and if i run into professor panigarya is this maybe it is good in terms of economic growth that is also debatable there are studies which said that you know it's like this um there's something which is i mean i don't know if if i can say this here uh, in gokul institute but anyway i would say since you said it's a free thing and you know you, uh, so i i think i can go out safely you know people say that alcohol and printing of money in the short term they are very good it gives they give you you know some high and all that but after that they become such a dangerous phenomenon after a while similarly this inequality syndrome is also like that inequality oh don't worry somebody is earning money he'll invest in he'll invest but after that it won't happen why is it that in spite of so much of productivity production linked incentives so much of reduction of corporate tax so much of uh, waving off and writing off uh, corporate loans why is domestic investment tepid and not rising and in spite of the government and the government leaders repeatedly pleading with the corporate sector please invest have you you must have seen lot of meetings but nothing is coming out why it's not that they don't have money and some of them are as i told you there some of them are leaving i i meet them when i go to you know some of these places but you see why is it so therefore if you want to make a choice on this basis the point is this 
whether somebody is capable of reducing inequality or not is one that is one are you capable you may not be but are you in in favor of inequality then i would rather choose somebody who is working and failing to eradicate inequality or reduce inequality rather than somebody who is celebrating inequality you get my point you didn't get it okay 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 and then and then it's this you know this has a this has a a political counterpart also this inequality is good let people earn money become rich become billionaires and they are after all good people they are not bad you know they will one day or the other they will also give you something and you you can also survive no don't worry about it this has a political counterpart especially today in the majoritarian kind of a politics that we see i'll tell you how it is my hunch nobody told me this nobody told me this but you know my hunch is this that you know what's wrong with majority rule the good people they have not gone any way to occupy any country have they how are they do you know the, our majority has never gone out and conquered other countries the good people so accept them they will look after you like those two people can look after you hello uh, sir uh, i am akash i work as a communications officer here so my question is about when we i saw you yes uh, uh, he he was the one uh, when we had uh, a conversation with ajit yeah sir uh, so when we speak of the party that was in government uh, last month uh, we always talk about narratives narratives being built so don't you think uh, the only way to tackle narrative is to create counter narrative and if yes Uh, how do we do this in these challenging times when media is uh, not probably working right or it's not that free as it used to be that's a very tough question <laughs> i didn't come prepared to you know <laughs> answer uh, a communication strategist uh, question like this but uh, you know um some people ask me um what's going to happen in this election why are you worried about this election you slept all this while and then suddenly you want uh, some change to happen you know this has not come about all of a sudden it's been there slowly and gradually and nothing is unannounced tell me one measure which is unannounced nothing is unannounced and you know when when the entire you are talking about narrative when the entire political narrative has undergone a radical change i'll tell you what the radical change in my perception even 15 10 15 years ago everybody every political party in this country used to say they were secular including the present ruling party isn't it they used to say we are secular but not like them they are pseudo secular they appease people and they call them as secular but we are genuinely secular but nevertheless secular today akash with a few honorable exceptions every political party and most of the political leaders are saying i am also hindu but not like them this 
is the this is the radical change that has happened in the indian polity you are not aware of it you are aware of it it happened in front of our eyes under our watch so the point is this that this narrative was built over the years meticulously slowly and a band of dedicated hard working people who did not expect reward people who did not expect publicity high profile photographs in the newspapers television coverage they worked and they changed you without you get being without you knowing it now the point i'm i'm not trying to be pessimistic nothing is going to happen in 20 i have my own views and you know about that also but this is not the forum to talk about those things but the point i'm making is that you know if there is a dedicated army of people working to append the constitutional values where is the army to defend those constitutional values if you don't have an army as dedicated as that to defend the constitutional values don't think that narratives can be shortcuts to this it won't be so me i i i am a ardent supporter of the constitutional values and i would sleep happily if even my constitutional values also have an army to defend them then i can you know let me let me take another 2 minutes uh, professor because this is interesting since you're all from uh, pune uh, you are you're now in pune most of you are not from pune i know uh, you're not from pune of course and i wish you a good time here and a long tenure you know who 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 um, from whom did the british inherit their power most people think you are a marathi most people think they have taken power from the moguls but akash says it's from the marathas he is right most marathas feel that but outside Ma- maharashtra people people think it's moguls okay and the seat of power is here do you know akash i'm i'm slightly going away from the economy and polity i'm going into the society social structures and all that you know pune used to close its gates city gates do you st- i don't know whether you still have those but pune as the as the seat of power of the peshwas they used to close their gates between 9 and 3 9 in the morning to 3 in the afternoon are you aware man you know why they did not want between those timings they did not want untouchables to enter pune pune those days there is a reason for it the reason is between those times the shadows that are cast are long so even if that shadow touches a higher caste 
he or she will be polluted. But there were exceptions. The except exceptions were dogs and pigs. That was Pune. The reason why I brought this in is that the battles of who owns this country, who, who, to whom this country belongs, you know, who are the people and who should be the rulers and who should have the knowledge, who should have the control of the society. And there were different schools of thought. And most of the battles emanated here and fought here in Pune. It could be you know, Gopal Krishna Gokhale, Balangatha Tilak, and you know, uh, Pule. Most of these things, the, the, the Pune and Pune surrounding areas, the municipalities, and whether the so called depressed classes, we call them scheduled castes now, and Dalits, and women. Women, of course, are, you know. And, you know, there are very prominent people, I don't want to take the names. We are, they are all very revered figures even during our uh, freedom movement, even as late as 1890s, people who wrote in English saying that educating women and backward classes, backward caste is dangerous. Do you know? Anyway, I'll stop there. I, I don't want to go into the details because they're all revert figures. The point is this. The point, you know, when, when people talk about, yeah, when people talk about what about that man, what about this man, he also fought for independence. They all fought for independence. But the point is, you know, war, they all fought and we do namaskaram to them. But what did their social thinking imply? What is, what is the consequence of that social thinking for India? Is it modern? Is it not? That's the, that's the mark. A oh, very good evening, sir. I am an uh, undergrad student here. Uh, sir, I have gone through white papers and electoral bonds, and I believe there was huge, huge disparities there. But there were... You, you, you gone through what? Uh, white paper and electoral bonds. Data. White, white paper on electoral bonds? Who issued? No, 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 no. White paper, the issued by... And. and. Oh, white paper and, and electoral bonds. Okay. And I do I believe there sir, were... I, I, I was thinking, how did I miss it? <laughs> I do believe there were lots of disparities there. But there was one point I got stuck. I would like to highlight, uh, can we say the, like, uh, the gross advances by public sector during 2004 was 6.6 .6 lakh crore, which rose to 39 lakh crore during 2012. So can we say during the UP government, the banking sector was highly unorganized and microeconomic stability was compromised which results in physical mismanagement that 27% more borrowing for market was taken. Therefore, resulting in enlarged physical deficit during 2007 to 9. So can we actually say that the uh, decline in industrial and ec uh, economic de development was actually because of the mismanagement in the banking, banking sector, resulting in macro instability, as depicted by white papers? What do you think? Sir, uh, if I go through the data from of the borrowings, there was huge, huge disparity in the data like hi highway building. There were affidavits uh, filed by High Court, which actually showed the uh, white papers actually showing the uh, manipulated data. But I couldn't find any manipulation in this data, as far as I researched. So you have the answer. But at the same time, sir, there were no, articles. No, no, you want to know my opinion on it. Yeah. Or you want to have a clarification? So clarification because there were articles conflicting from, there was an article from Times of India, which actually was contradicting this fact. And there were articles from uh, media sources like Mint, which were actually favoring this fact. But was there, there was no data involved. It was just piece of opinion or perspective. The point is, is what did you say your name is? Dhruv. 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 Um, you know, I would take any data that is put out by the present government with a pinch of salt. That, that, that is my starting point. Because, you know, on a lighter vein, I must say this. Last year, we had uh, elections in Karnataka. And in Karnataka, during the campaign, 
the prime minister said that look these opposition fellows they have abused me 99 times he is very precise not 100 times not 98 times but if you ask the government how many migrant labor died they don't have data unemployment they don't have data you know today if you want my friend here in uh, ramgopal is here if you want any data somewhat reliable credible the cmi there is no data from the government for most of the things it it it, it stopped therefore in a white paper uh, i'll come to you in a white paper if there there is a and let us take it at face value maybe you know in this particular paragraph in that particular table it's right if that is the case well that shouldn't have happened you know i don't know if 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 at all i had given this impression to you that this is a match between upa and nda no this has to be a match between the people of india and any government that's what i feel so if you ask me then what happened then what happened you know nehru what happened i have nothing to do with it and who will be, who is the loser yeah one one small clarification as far as i know on the yeah yeah there's no question i just want to make a small point that uh, till 2017 or 16 there was no systematic data on employment in india it's only given once in 5 6 years and it's it was always given as 3 4% is unemployment in india uh, i tried hard to get this data and the only data systematic i got was from ilo and it actually shows that in other than covid time the unemployment has been relatively low the currently it was around 7 to 8% this is what the ilo data this is the closest that comes to systematic cmi some of my professors tell me the, there are a lot of methodological issues every collection of data has methodological issues no there is no data under the sun which you know is perfect uh, which is acceptable to everybody and the point is this ram gopal i mean you are you 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 mine a lot, lot of data i know that where does ilo get the data as far as i know ilo or undp which talked about the multi dimensional poverty index and all that they don't get data primarily when they don't source data they don't collect data they depend upon the governments respective governments to take the data so it is their data which is reflected in their reports it is the government's data which is reflected in the international organizations reports because long time ago international organizations in deference to the sovereign principle of the nation states they decided not to you know collect data behind the backs of the national governments you see uh, other people also right, will have right. to hear you political economy uh, you spoke about i found uh, the politics is more dangerous than the economics i value the finance minister more than the prime minister i mean this is the indirect remark i can make for all of you to judge are you trying to humor me <laughs> and thank you very much for this opportunity and thank you very much for your attention thank you uh good evening friends uh, it's a full house and uh, i attend a few seminars full house is a rare opportunity so i compliment uh, sir on you that and one thing for the students i should say the conviction in which he spoke debatable of course i can debate for years together with him on many of these issues he has raised but that that is a view point again it is coming 
and uh, unemployment issue is not solved, it will not be solved, let us get it. Only one thing is, if you add 10 things negative, all of us can add one one negative points. Professor Hari asked a fantastic question which remains unanswered. End of the tunnel, a good thing about the new government, what you would like to say? Because good thing, you know, what do you think? Yes, sir, this is my question to you. Only one good thing, because this uh, young crowd is here, the government is here for 10 years, hopefully they will come for another 5 years, that is my prediction. So what is the good thing about this meeting? <laughs> How did I not anticipate this? <laughs> you know, uh, no, 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 people do ask me this very often. But you know, you, you, uh, Professor Patnaik uh, is, is very polite <laughs> and very respectful. Sir, he was in RBI, so you have no option. <laughs> you know, how people ask me? Rayar Parakala, don't you see anything good? <laughs> Always you see only something going wrong. What's wrong with you? <laughs> this is what people tell me, ask me. Then I tell them, look, if you go to a doctor, and the doctor examines you and says, Prabhakar, there is something wrong with your heart. You have to take care. Then imagine me coming out, stamping my feet and say, what kind of a fellow he is he? My eyes are all right, my legs are all right, my hands are all right, my teeth are all right, I'm, 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 my memory is fine. He is just pointing out one thing and you know he is trying to, what is this? So friends, uh, let us keep our heart uh, where it is and use our brain and evaluate the performance of the new India by using our brain, not by heart. And uh, it is the conviction in which he spoke. It is worth a evening to spend with him. So thank you, sir. And uh, thank you very much. And uh, thank you all for giving your time. I, all of you will agree with me. That is the evening all spent. And uh, vote of thanks, I will request my young friends to do that. Thank you. I would like to thank Dr. Prakal Prabhakar for giving his valuable time and sharing his wisdom with us. It was indeed insightful. I would like to thank each and every member of the staff and faculty for making this program a success. Last but not the least, I would like to thank our audience for the engaging session.